So what is garbage collection? Some garbage collected languages include Java, Python, c -sharp, Go, Ruby, JavaScript, and many more. So first let's go through what the stack and the heap are. So the stack is memory and RAM, give it to the program when it starts. The memory is used when necessary, as necessary, and is overwritten when, need, when not needed. It's fast because it's already allocated, and it's small in size, normally about one megabyte. Then we have the heap, which is also memory and RAM. You need to ask the operator system for more memory. Creating new heap memory is slow, lasts until cleared or the program ends, and can be any size up to the, the size of the RAM. You can watch my video on stack versus heap if you want more detail. So garbage collected languages, the language decides if a variable should be put on the stack or the heap for you. This will depend on the language, often classes, arrays and lists are on the heap. So here's a Java example, and we just want to print the number 10, that's all we want to do. So here, so an integer in Java will be on the stack by default. So what this does is it basically we find some memory in stack memory, so uh, an integer is 32 bits or 4 bytes. So we find 4 bytes that are free or not allocated anywhere to any memory. And then we set it to 10. And then we print it. And then we come when we come to here, this goes out of scope. We call this going out of scope when it's not needed anymore. So it gets cleared. The memory isn't overwritten, but it's it can be overwritten when needed later. Now let's say look at an example with a string. So a string is just simply text, uh, but a string will be on the heap. So what we do is we ask the operating system, can we have some memory for this? And what this will actually be is basically a uh, it's 12 characters. Uh, in Java, it actually will be two bytes because it uses a different format than ASCII. It uses UTF-16, but I'm just going to show one byte for each character just for simplicity. And it's only it's not needed for this anyway. It looks the same as ASCII. So basically, we have this 12 uh, character array, which are simply just numbers that represent the ASCII characters. So 12 times 2 is 24 bytes. So we ask the operating system, can we have 24 bytes of memory? And it gives it to us. Then we create a stack reference to the first element of this array. And that's what string is. It's a stack reference to a an array of characters on the heap. Then when we come to here, so we print it, we print out hello world, and then we come to here, then what happens? So this stack reference is out of scope again. So it's not necessary, it's gone. So this will be cleared when needed later, but we still have this heap memory. What happens to that? So every so often the program will pause and the program will check all heap memory to see if there is any that is not referenced at all. So it will find this hello world array and find, oh, there's no reference to it on the stack. So I'm going to free it. So garbage collection, freeze it. That's what garbage collection does. Pauses the program and clears all heap memory that was allocated. Now let's look at an example with a class. So here we have a class with a person, which just have a string name, integer age, and string for occupation. And we create this. Here's where things get a little bit complicated. So when we create the person, we actually create a heap memory that looks like this. So the top one is actually 64 bits, or 8 bytes which stores a memory address. Second one would be 32 bits, again for the number, the integer, and then the next one would be another 64 bits for another memory address. So what we have to do, say we create a stack reference to this, we create a stack reference to that, to the first block, to the first uh, address, and this is actually linking to heap memory. So we, we create heap memory that links to other heap memory. So this will be John in this situation, and this will be doctor in this situation. So here what person is, uh, is, is a stack reference to three variables. One has a memory address which has another array, a heap array. Second one is uh, an integer on the heap and the third one is another memory address which links to another array of characters in another area on the heap. So say for example we go through this program, we print, we print all this data, then we come to here, so this gets taken off the stack again because it's not valid anymore so the garbage collection has to go through and check like oh this is not referenced anymore let's clear this and then garbage collection comes back around again because uh, we've deleted the references from that heap from that that was basically a, a memory address so garbage collection has to go around again and then oh it clears this one as well 
This is how garbage collection works. Luckily, in garbage collector languages, you don't have to deal with this and it does it for us. So also arrays will be on the heap. The reason arrays will be on the heap is generally they can use compile time known values, so values that you can work out, but you can also use runtime known values as well. So say for example, you ask the user for some input and then you set an array based on that value. You don't know that when you start the program, it's only when the program's running. You can use that to set things in, in garbage collected languages. So here we have create array and we're taking in an int size. We don't know where we got the variable int size. It could be, it could be known at runtime, it could be known at compile time, we don't know. Here it would be known at compile time, but to be safe and to basically not allocate too much memory and have a stack overflow, when you use too much memory that the program gives you, the operating system gives you by default as a stack overflow. To be safe, it puts it on a heap. So every time you have an array in Java or JavaScript or Python, most of the time it will be on the heap. Let's look at a JavaScript example. So in JavaScript, there's no difference between arrays and lists. They're the same thing. So you can make an array, you can make an array bigger, basically. The thing is with JavaScript is it uses 64-bit floating point numbers for, to represent all numbers, which means we need 64 bits instead of 32 bits, which is kind of a waste, but I guess it's I guess it's simpler, I don't know, you don't have to think about types. So everything is a 64-bit floating point number, which is basically a double in Java, I guess. So th this is just for simplicity, I'm not gonna show 64 bits, I'll show eight bits. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and it's 40 bytes of data, when in theory it doesn't really need to be that much, but that's how it works in JavaScript. So we get this heap memory, and then we have a reference to it. So we reference the first element. That's basically what an array is. It's a stack reference to the first element of an array on the heap. Now say for example we want to do this. We want to add to the, uh, the numbers array. We want to concatenate or make it bigger, and then add these values. So we move this to the right. Then we create more heap memory. And we ask the operating system, can we have 80 bytes of memory? Then we need to copy the values. So we copy the values from the old heap array into the new heap array. And we set the new values in the new heap array. And then we set the new stack reference to this. So that's what we did. So we basically, we just copy the values, ask for the operating system for more memory. The reason why we have to ask the operating system for more memory is because we have 40 bytes here, but the bytes around it could be not free. So we have to ask it specifically. We need 80 bytes because we need 80 bytes of continuous memory, otherwise it won't work. So we have to ask the operating system every time for new memory and for wait. Please give us this memory, wait for a response, and it, the operating system has to find memory and give it to you. So this is pretty slow when you do this. Then, so as this old heap memory is not referenced, garbage collection freeze it. So imagine for example we do something like this. So we create the array, add to the array, add to the array, add to the array. What does this do? So so here's the process. So we ask the operating system for 80 bytes of memory and set the data. Create a stack reference to it, print the data. Then we ask the operating system for 160 bytes of memory, copy the old data into the new memory and then fill the new data, then create a new stack reference and print it. Then we free the 80 bytes with garbage collection. Then we ask the operating system for 240 bytes of memory. We copy the old data into the new memory and fill the new data. Then we create a new stack reference and print the data. And then we free the 160 bytes with garbage collection. And you do the same for the next array and you allocate 800 bytes of memory. The thing is you don't need to do this if you know the total amount. If you know the total amount is 20, you don't need to do this. This is very inefficient and a waste of time and resources. What you should do is something like this. Let's create the array with 20 and then set the values like this. So here you simply, you ask the operating system for 320 bytes of memory, create a stack reference to it, set the data, print the data, and then free three, and then we have 320 bytes instead of 800. So this is a lot less wasteful and more efficient. So even though languages that have garbage collection don't allow you to control what's heap and what's stack, for performance you can still do things to make it more performant. Generally the more times you allocate memory and trigger garbage collection the less the worse the performance so you want to try to avoid that as much as possible if you want more performant code.